These are live pictures from Gaza. It's 7.40 a.m. there. It's the sun is rising. It's the morning, obviously, as and it's waking up from another night of no power and no water supplies in that strip in the wake of the atrocities carried out by Hamas and in anticipation of a ground invasion expected by Israel over coming days for reaction to the local ramifications of the war in Israel. I caught up earlier with Labor frontbencher Tanya Plibersek. Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek, thanks for your time. A bit to talk about in your space of environment. Before we do, though, lots on the agenda today. First of all, the fallout of the attacks in Israel, and it continues to reverberate here. How worried are you about these reports of threats to members of the Australian Jewish community, uh, the rallies that we're seeing? Are you worried about the potential for violence and civil unrest here in Australia? Well, first of all, I think it's important to say that the attacks by Hamas on Israel are abhorrent uh, and must stop immediately. This, uh, the death toll is shocking. Uh, what's happening in Israel, I think, is appalling. And around the world, people are condemning the actions of Hamas. Uh, we have seen some unfortunate spillover here in Australia with uh, people at rallies uh, for example, chanting uh, anti-Semitic chants, really appalling. I, I think it is really appalling, and I think most Australians are rightly disgusted. And, and also, um, in the last few hours, some threats made to individual members of the Jewish community, uh, in, both in Melbourne and in Sydney, the Victoria Police... Uh, confirming one particular incident they're looking at in, on Turak Road late yesterday. These sorts of clashes or, or uh, incidents, they also bring a, a sense of dread, don't they, that these divisions that we see internationally could come and be replicated at least to some extent here? Well, there's no place for this sort of behaviour in Australia. There's no place for anti-Semitism or prejudice or hate of any kind in Australia. And, uh, of course, the government uh, condemns any such behaviour unequivocally. Is, is the government doing enough? Is, it, is its uh, attention focused enough on protecting members of that community, specifically the Jewish community? Some parents telling their kids not to go to school, for example. Well, of course, we uh, absolutely will do whatever is necessary to prevent any sort of uh, attacks or hostility here in Australia. Uh, the state governments um, are obviously working with their police forces to offer protection, uh, should it be necessary. But it is important to say that there is no place for hatred uh, or vilification or, or any sort of threats here in Australia. Absolutely. And uh, on another matter, the referendum looms this Saturday. It looks like it's going to be a very difficult ask to get that yes vote up. Are you, are you looking to the healing process that will be needed? Because there will be much healing needed after the vote if it goes the way every poll suggests it will because it has been a divisive campaign. Well, in the immediate next few days, I'm focusing every minute on trying to convince people who perhaps still haven't made up their minds to vote yes, to vote yes for recognition and yes for reconciliation and yes to listening and yes to better results, because we know that most Australians agree that the unacceptable gaps between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians should be addressed in this country. It's not acceptable to have an eight-year life expectancy gap, to have gaps in education and employment and uh, you know, child health and mortality. We need to close those gaps. And more than 80% of Indigenous Australians support a voice as a critical con contribution to closing that gap. Uh, because they know that when we listen to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians, we make better decisions about the things that affect their lives. We see it in my own electorate in Redfern. It's the place that 
established the first Aboriginal medical service and the first Aboriginal legal service. We've got Aboriginal aged care uh, and other services because they work, because they genuinely make a difference to people's lives, because it's Indigenous Australians coming up with the solutions to the issues in their own communities. So I'm going to be working every, every day. I'll be out campaigning campaigning here in Victoria this afternoon. I'll be in Northern Tasmania tomorrow and in my own electorate on Saturday, trying to convince those wavering last minute voters that we're living in the no. A vote for no is a vote for more of the same and the continuation of the unacceptable gaps that Australia has. The polling suggests that the inner city, like your seat, will back the yes vote. The outer suburbs and regional areas won't. Why is there that divide in our community? Well, I can say that the reason there's a, a strong yes vote in my community is because there's really strong Aboriginal leadership, not just uh, during this referendum campaign, and, and I have to say there have been terrific uh, leadership during this referendum campaign from uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders living in my electorate, but because my community has seen decades of First Nations leadership. That, as I said earlier, the first Aboriginal legal service in the country was set up in, in Redfern. The first Aboriginal medical service in the country set up in Redfern. We've got Aboriginal aged care, uh, Wyanga. We've got Aboriginal employment services uh, and support for young people, services like Tribal Warrior, we've got Babata Men's Group, uh, we've got um, Mudjungal Women's Group. All of these have been doing such amazing work in our local community that the, I think the residents of Redfern and surrounding suburbs know that this is the way forward. They've seen it in action for decades. Now, you've just approved, um, on to areas in your portfolio, you've approved the Melbourne Renewable Energy Hub, which includes the largest battery yeah. system in Asia. When you look at the demands to get to that target of over 80% renewables by 2030, how do, you, how do you bring the community with you on this path? Because I know, and our viewers would be well aware in certain areas where they're certainly around wind power, there's been a bit of pushback from local communities along the coast in particular. How do you bring people with you? Yeah, well, this is a really exciting announcement. We've uh, announced uh, environmental approval for the largest battery in Australia. It means that we can see the, the, the faster, stronger rollout of cheaper, cleaner, renewable energy because we've got that battery back up for a million homes. And that's about 30 kilometres northwest of Melbourne. Uh, it's a really exciting announcement today that will firm up and, uh, and underpin our transition to renewable energy. Uh, and Kieran, you're right about uh, some of the projects that um, we're seeing, transmission lines, solar farms, wind farms, they do need to work with local communities to make sure that the benefits of local jobs are explained and that they have the lowest possible environmental and, and social impact on those communities. But we have to make the transmission to get more cheaper, cleaner, renewable energy into our energy grid. And the, the coal-fired power of yesteryear has been closing. It, it was closing under the former Liberal National Government. They had 22 different uh, energy policies. They didn't land a single one of them. So what they saw under the Liberals and Nationals is four gigawatts of uh, dispatchable power leave the energy grid and only one gigawatt replacing that. This transition is already happening, but it was happening under the previous government without any plan to see more power going into the grid, particularly more renewable energy. We're dealing with the outcome of a decade of delay and dithering and dysfunction and denial under the previous government about the need for transition. Uh, we're doing it in the best, fastest and most thoughtful way we can. Can the target be met? Is it realistic, that 82% target? It's an ambitious target. It, it, it certainly is an ambitious target. And as the Climate and Energy Minister, Chris Bowen, said yesterday, there's no point in aiming low. I mean, you can aim low and get there. Uh, 
no problem. We're aiming high because we know that this country needs to make that transition to relying more on cheaper, cleaner, renewable energy. It's not just better for the environment. It will actually save Australian homes and businesses money over time. Um, but it, it's a big job. It's a big job. And it, I have to say, one of the interesting things that I've noticed from the Greens political party is they say, go faster, go faster, more renewable energy. But then whenever there's a a project, um, a transmission line or a solar farm or a wind farm, they'll be first to put their hands up against it. We actually need to make this transition together as a nation. We've seen what a decade of fights between you know, pro-renewable energy, pro-coal and gas delivered us. It delivered us less energy security, higher costs and worse environmental outcomes. We've got to change that. Now, you're at the Victorian Trades Hall today. You've just uh, announced a listing of the Trades Hall on the National Heritage List. Why is the building significant to the nation more broadly, not just the Labor movement? Well, it's significant to the nation, partly for its amazing uh, architecture. I mean, this is a fantastic example of neoclassical architecture, probably one of the best in the country. But it's also got such important social significance. This is where the stonemasons won the first fight in Australia for the eight hour day. Eight hours of work, eight hours of rest, eight hours uh, of recreation every day. That changed Australian history and it made Australia uh, one of the, the leading countries globally for recognising the rights of working people. This is one of the, uh, this is in fact where Arthur Corwell uh, told Australians about the end of the war. Now, this is a place um, that uh, fought apartheid and fought conscription and fought for equal pay for women uh, and, fought for, and fought for the, the right of women to vote in Australia. So many uh, huge uh, social campaigns were started and organised and supported from this place. Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek. Thanks. Appreciate it. Great to talk to you, Kieran.